the deans. I'm the project lead on Solfax, and I'm extremely excited to be here today with all of you. I hope this inspired you a little bit about the vision of Solfax, and I hope in the next few minutes I can explain to you in more detail what we are all about. Two years ago, Larry Page said something at Google I.O. that really resonated with me. He said, people are starving in the world, not because we don't have enough food, but because we're not organized enough to solve that problem. I truly believe that is the case of many big problems that we are currently facing as civilization. And this is exactly where moonshots and solfax come in. The idea that we can solve these big problems, bring together community, and attempt the impossible. Moonshots, as earlier described in the video, are projects that dare the impossible, that solve a huge problem, so they need to um, affect millions, if not billions, of people's of lives, have a radical solution, and a breakthrough in science and technology. Our is build a community that drives moonshot thinking, and that all around. I believe I have one of the most interesting and exciting jobs in the world. I collaborate with science and technology universities, with research labs and foundations, scientists and entrepreneurs that are working on incredibly complex things that have the potential to make a very big impact in the world. Once we've found these individuals, we bring them together at an event like this one here today, and we talk about their innovations, and we build communities and a shared mindset around them. Why do we do this? I think you will agree with me that when we actually launched to the moon in 1969, that it was not the work of one single person, but it was a collaboration of many different teams internationally, of extraordinary brain power, a huge vision to make it possible, and also a huge amount of science and technology which got us there in the end. Last weekend, somebody told me that um, in the next 13th, in the 13th five-year plan for China, innovation and entrepreneurship will be a key focal point, which made me incredibly happy when I came here. And I was thinking about that. I was thinking, how does that feel? What, what comes up for me? And I realized the first thing that I, I remembered was that China actually invented the paper. And paper, to this day, is still one of the most wildly used information mediums that we have. There is no other invention, quite frankly, that is that cheap, that ready accessible, and that durable. In the time of technology, we would think we would have found something that is better than paper. But actually, it's not so. Um, our hard drives that we have are actually not as durable as paper is. After about 50 years, all the information gets lost due to um, natural magnetic, mag magnetic decay. So don't keep all of your pictures and expect them to be there in the future. But the second thing that I realized um, was we have this sort of notion, this sort of assumption, that China is somewhat mainly affiliated with copying things incredibly well. And while I was thinking that, I was like, well, I don't actually know if that's the truth anymore. Um, that is a big assumption. Now, these days, we don't just assume things anymore because we live in a time and age where we have this extraordinary, powerful tool that is called data. So I decided to uh, jump into the wormhole, find a lot of data, and find what I could find about you know, what in the innovation landscape in China looks like right now. And what I'm about to show you, I think, will surprise you because it really surprised me and it made me deeply great grateful to be here today with you. This is a chart uh, that I pulled together from 2000 to 2013. It shows you all of the patents that had been accepted on a worldwide basis. So we're looking at them uh, from 2000 to 2013, and as a total from 100% of all patents that had been accepted across the world. Now you can see uh, we have a big chunk over here, which is the United States of America. We then go further, this green guy here is the United Kingdom. Uh, we've got South Korea, which is the orange chunk here in the middle. We then have Germany, which is quite widely spread as well. Um, the, um, France, and then we have this country over here. Do you have any idea who that might be? 
that is China. Now, what, what, what seems extraordinary, because it seems like it's the only country that is just pushing its well in there, the numbers are quite extraordinary. In 2000, China owned 3.48% of all the patents that had been accepted worldwide. The United States, in comparison, was at 36.85%. In 2013, 13 years later only, China is now at 36.39% of all patents that have been accepted, and the United States is down to 24.84%. This makes China, the biggest innovator in the world at this point in time. And just to back that up, I also looked at all the scientific papers that have been published, and we see a very similar curve there. So I would really say we, we need to change our perspective about the idea that China can only copy, but more importantly, that you, this is an extraordinarily powerful place to be in the world, to solve big problems, to innovate, and to really drive innovation for the future. So I'm even more so excited to be here today and hear of six extraordinary scientists and inventors that are coming from this country to show you uh, the extraordinary projects and moonshots they are working on. Thank you so much.